Single photon detectors have been used for many years and are still on the rise to this day. Advanced technology such as optical quantum key distribution and quantum computing utilize these single photon detectors and their unique performance standards. In this video, we will be discussing a very special type of single photon detector called the superconducting nanowire single photon detector, or for our convenience sake, we will call it the SNSPD. To understand how an SNSPD works, it is important to know first the basic understanding of how superconductivity worked with certain metals. As we know, all metals have a certain intrinsic resistance, and if you run an electrical current through this resistance, you will get a voltage. This is known as Ohm's law. But we also notice that if you drop the temperature of the metal, the resistance drops proportionally as well. And at a certain temperature, called the critical temperature, we notice the electrical resistance completely vanishes, yielding a zero net voltage. This is due to the formation of atomic glass paired electrons known as Cooper pairs. We can also break this superconductivity as well by simply raising the temperature above its critical temperature or by increasing the current running through the wire above its critical superconducting current. Utilizing this superconducting effect, we can now describe the basics and applications of the SNSPD. First, the nanowire is cooled below its critical temperature, causing it to enter its superconducting state. Second, a bias current is run through the wire just below its critical current. I'll explain why this is important later on. When a photon is introduced and hits the nanowire, it interacts with the cubic pairs within the metal. This interaction breaks the cubic pairs, causing a small resistive hotspot to form. This current flowing through the wire goes through the induced hotspot, causing the current density in this region to increase. Since we are near the critical current limit, as mentioned before, the increase in current density at this region breaks the critical current barrier. This break in the current causes the local hotspot resistance to increase and therefore produce an overall voltage in the metal. The complete voltage pulse produced is then shunted by an external circuit, allowing the metal to cool back down and enter back into its superconducting state. A heat flow equation formulated by Alan M. Caden in 1996 describes this superconducting phenomena. It relates the superconducting nanowire's thickness and heat capacity to the temperature. Here we see that C is the heat capacity, T is the temperature, K is the thermal conductivity, D is the thickness, and alpha is the thermal battery conductance. However, in further measurements of the resistive hotspots in different experiments, the results were greater than predicted. This led to modify Caden's heat equation to include the joule heating effect produced from the increase in current density as mentioned before. Here we see that J is the current density and P is the electrical resistivity. We can also describe an electrical model of an SNSPD by using an equivalent electrical circuit. First, we set up a bias current running through an inductor and load resistor. The inductor is essentially the nanowire itself, since it can be characterized by its unique kinetic inductance. This kinetic inductance makes most metals unique from one another. The low resistor measures the voltage output of the wire. To introduce a photon, we add a switch and time-dependent resistor to the circuit. The switch controls the state of the wire, changing it from superconducting and normal. The time-dependent resistor is the hotspot resistance produced by the photon itself. This model can be used to simulate SNSPD pulses and help characterize the nanowire. Now knowing how SNSPDs work, their applications can be used in many areas of sensitive optical measurements. Many can measure near IR and IR sources and have an amazing time resolution between pulse measurements. Low dial count rates and high detection efficiency have been observed by using an SNSPD, making them an excellent photon counter device. Although some of its disadvantages, such as its low operating temperature, make it difficult to use, its overall sensitivity performance makes up for it, making it an excellent single photon detector.